Paige, can you tell me what you just said after you did torch ones? I drank the milk. I put it down and I just said, oh, feels like basic training. <laughs> Spicy. What's going on, everybody? For the New River Battalion, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Harrison, and you're watching Torched Ones, the show where it answers to your burning questions and even hotter wings. Today, we're joined by two very special guests, an Army Judge Advocate General Officer and a cadet who wants to be. <laughs> Captain Paige Wayhoff was born in Salem, Virginia, spooky, and is the Brigade Judge Advocate for 1st Brigade U.S. Army Cadet Command, among many other duties, which we'll discuss later. She's a former armor officer, one of the very first female officers in that branch, but apparently didn't find that challenging enough. So she went to law school at Berkeley and now provides legal advice and trial counsel services for a slew of units at Fort Knox and across the country to nearly 150 ROTC programs in four different brigades. She has a self-declared obsession for apocalyptic weather movies, a universal love for animals, is generally down for pretty much anything, as evidenced by her participation in our Fall 12 Mile Ruck March and the Brigade Commander Staff Combatives Program. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having me, sir. Cadet Mason Kingsler hails from Prince George, Virginia, and is a senior in Army ROTC and the Corps of Cadets. He's currently serving as an Assistant Public Affairs Officer in our program, and his goal is to be accepted to and complete law school to become a Judge Advocate General Officer one day, just like Captain Wade. He likes strawberry ice cream, but only if it has frozen strawberries in it. He MCs for Campus Ministry, and can do calf raises of a very impressive 525 pounds for reps. You're far cooler than I am. This is great. Welcome to the show. <laughs> What's your experience with spicy food? Are you first? Oh, yeah. almost non-existent, sir, but like you said, down to try anything. All right. Well, we, we're going to broaden some horizons. It'll be awesome. Uh, so my girlfriend is uh, Indian and she's been training me. So it's, uh, it's uh, a lot of spicy food and uh, it's, I, I feel ready. Okay. Awesome. Strategic advantage. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that probably is. Okay. What? Okay, then. Controversial opinion. First question: What's the best place to get Indian food in and around Blacksburg? Um, so all the restaurants are bad, and it's our friend named Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she's in Christiansburg, but she was, she, only for friends. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Let's do it. This is one of my favorite hot sauces in the world. Um, I'm on far side. Paige picked out all of our sauces. I so did. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Don't. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm in danger! This is our second. I want to start one bite, man. Oh boy. <laughs> you gotta finish the other bite. You don't have to, you can eat as much or as little as you want. Don't do that. You don't feel obligated. <laughs> so no, we're doing it. <laughs> no eye contact? No eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, hey, <laughs> you're here at Virginia Tech representing both Armor Branch and the JAG Corps at our branch orientation to meet your Army Day. You were at Texas A&M earlier this spring for their event. Tell us about your new friend that you made on that trip, Kodiak. Oh, horses. So... I weaseled my way into a meeting with Title IX, and the head of the disciplinary committee said, do you want to come meet some horses later in the afternoon? So, as you indicated, I love animals. And we went out and got to hang out with the Mounted Cavalry Squadron of horses out there. There's like 72 of them, but my favorite was that one. And I unashamedly stood in front of this horse for about 45 minutes and had it just like slobber down my arm. <laughs> And I was in absolute heaven. I probably would have stayed there all night if they wouldn't have wanted to kick me out. <laughs> New best friend. I said if they ever wanted to put the horse out to pasture, call me. I'll take him. That's awesome. My uh, my wife's uh, aunt has a bunch of horses and she does the same thing. She loves to hang out with the horses. So Turns out there's lawyer power. I just showed up and was like, hey, I was promised a tour. What can you do for me? And I just went and I saw all of the horses. Fantastic. Okay, Mason, you were born at the home of Airborne Special Operations, Fort Liberty, formerly known as Fort Bragg. 
Uh, did your father's service as an NCO in the Army's Ordnance Corps shape your path here to Army ROTC? Um, I'd say, I'd say certainly. It was uh, very impactful for him. That, like, I was Army brat for, I guess, half my life. About so, like, he got out when I was about ten, and um, it it it, sh it showed me like a, a good representation of like uh, how to serve your country, how to do the right thing, um, and like the Army instilled a lot of good values in him that like. We go, we go back to his hometown and like I see the differences between his siblings and, uh, and him and uh, just know that that difference was uh, in large part due to the Army and uh, something I wanted to be a part of as well. Cool. Awesome. Anything you guys want to talk about before we try our next one? No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. No judgment. We'll, we'll cut the sip in the water. That's fine. All right, there you go. This is, <laughs> this is honey hot sauce. It's uh, obviously very sweet sauce. Delightful. How much spicier than the first one, sir? Uh, so there's an exponential curve. Let's mm -hmm. just say that. So we're still on a little bit. Okay. We're still we're still at the left side of the shelf of hot sauce. In that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's reassuring. Uh, absolutely, sir. Very. Cheers. Oh my God. <laughs> Crushing life right now, baby. Doing great. But right, so, Mason, describe your duties as the regimental athletic officer for the Corps of Cadets here. What do you do? So, I fill out the company athletics for for, for the Corps. So, um, it's sports that they play every Wednesday, and uh, I hassle people to fill out an Excel after they play that game. Um, and that's probably the hardest part of it, is getting them to fill out that Excel. I just do my job, man. I do what my God-given abilities allow me to do, and I thank Jesus Christ for it every single day. I, I, I don't know what the challenge is, um, but uh, I have multiple people who don't do it each week. And um, <laughs> if we you're call a out, great I'm, staff I'm, officer. Uh, I, won't, I won't call any names, but uh, you know who you are. So. <laughs> you can send them this clip as a subtle <laughs> warning, like, <clears throat> just so you know. Please fill out myself. You'll find... Um, as an attorney, one of the enduring problems will be people responding to your emails, and so it will feel a lot like the Excel sheet where you're like, per my previous email, please respond. I need a signed copy of insert whatever. I don't think that is unique to being a lawyer either. Nope. I just say that. Very true, sir. Okay, so Paige, you are currently, okay, I'm gonna read this one because this, this gets pretty serious. You're the brigade judge advocate for four brigades in Cadet Command. Your trial counsel and advice for Fort Knox and all of Cadet Command. Uh, and you wear a bunch of other hats as a JAG officer. That is absolutely exceptionally time consuming. How do you manage your team of two and your support to four brigade commanders, like 150 programs? And then also, what's the most rewarding aspect of that job? Excellent question, sir. I'm a bit of a workaholic, um, but I think the idea is that if you love what you do, you don't ever feel like you're working, and so I try to manage my time. I'm very organized. For a long time, I actually thought about being a professional organizer, so I've done that to my life as an attorney as well, and clearly I hate talking to people, so when 99% of my day is, what can I do for you? How can I help? It's really a joy. And I think that goes to the most rewarding aspect of what as well. I think I just want to be helpful. And so when the attorney is not immediately hung up on, I and occasionally I get a great job, thanks so much, that makes me feel like a job well done. And that's the most rewarding aspect. It's the giving advice, feeling like I'm not being a problem for a brigade commander or any of the other people I give advice to. Very cool. Uh Mason, I, I know you're interested in a bunch of stuff. Is there anything you want to ask Captain Weehoff? Uh, yeah, I had a few questions. Um, oh, dear. It's funny, because the first question I had was, what was the most rewarding part of your job? So <laughs> Actually, I should have amended that and said, being here, getting to try spicy food. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, like, I had a question of, what's your day-to-day -day life like? Oh, a lot of talking on the phone. A lot of running down the hallway when I hear my office phone ringing. So I have two phones, an office phone, my Teams, and then computer, and... I forward them all my cell phone. 
might work. But I like feeling like I'm juggling things as I'm sprinting <laughs> down the hallway because I've developed the, oh, my phone is ringing run. <laughs> and so you just hear me going up and down the hallway. Um, so I think day to day, honestly, it's solving problems and occasionally getting to be the phone a friend for when someone is stuck in traffic and they really want to vent. I've been through many a Chick-fil-A line or Starbucks ordering where I'm Hey Jack, one second, hold on. Can I have um, a like tall coffee to go? <laughs> I think that's the most rewarding part and like the day to day as well. But different people, lots of conversations, all hours of the day. Cause I also keep California hours. Brutal. <laughs> okay. Ready to move on? Yes. Okay. All right, this one is uh, number six in the current Hotlands lineup. So it's right here in the middle of our lineup. Gonna be delicious, maple bourbon reaper. <laughs> See, it starts nice and like cozy. Maple bourbon. Gotta be kind of sweet. Reaper. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Mm -hmm. The medicine go down, medicine go down. Can't do it all at once. <laughs> You're doing fantastic. So Paige, you and I have something really unusual in common. We can both claim Virginia, Texas, and California yes. as part of some idea of home. Yes, sir. How did you come to have a connection with those three states? I was born in Virginia and came back to work in Virginia after college before I joined the Army. And I think I'm also a fair weather geographic human. So depending on who I'm talking to, if I can get geographically proximate to it, I'll say, oh, wow, I'm also from there. Um, but then most of my time as a child was spent in Texas. And then shockingly, I hate the cold. I thought I really would like the cold for undergrad, walking uphill both ways for miles in the snow, not ideal. Didn't want to repeat that for law school. So when the army said, hey, you've just spent a year in El Paso with dust storms and dirt everywhere. You can go anywhere you want to go. Northern California seemed pretty nice. So I claimed California as well. Okay. I, I guess I could have put some of that together. But that's, that's pretty interesting. I was born in California. I lived in Texas as a kid and then I moved to Virginia in fifth grade. I like to do occasionally annoy my commanders with the Valley Girl voice if I'm really trying to get something. I just like turn on the California Valley Girl. One of one of my lifelong friends, <laughs> my grandparents live in Sacramento, which is where I was born there. One of my lifelong friends is Lindsay, who grew up down the street from there, and she does a really good Valley Girl voice. It's always super impressive. Was that the girl in the photo from the call that we or the talk that we had? It was. Excellent. Yeah, good memory. We got the chance to talk to Lima Company this week uh, in the Corps Cadets. Just about culture and legacy and stuff like that. It was, it was a good time. Uh, Mason, tell me about having a Wahoo for a fourth grade teacher and how that interacted with you coming to Virginia Tech. That was rough. And I, I on the sheet, I only put fourth grade, but uh, the advanced fifth grade teacher left that same year, so I had a fourth and fifth grade. Um, but it, it, it started in fourth grade, and I she was a UVA fan, and it was the first teacher like I just didn't get along with. Like, did I antagonize her a little bit? That's that's up for debate. That's up for debate. <laughs> but um, we we our our first conversation was about the NFL draft, and I'm a Packers fan. And like, long story short, we got knocked out of the playoffs. And I'm like, oh, better draft pick. It's fine. It's fine. And she's like, no, you had the best record, so you're in the back. Long story short, I was right. But that started a long line of feuds that we would have throughout this fourth grade. And I'll argue that I was right with most of them. But, so you're going to be a great lawyer if you are willing to still, like, 15 <laughs> years later, say, you know, I was right. Yeah, yeah. I knew I was right. Yeah, and I, I, can, I can remember many of them, mostly the ones I was right with. So, like, if I don't remember them, then that. The next step will be when you add paragraphs to emails from conversations that you've had weeks ago. Where you say, so I've been doing some research into this, and I just wanted to confirm that this is the correct approach because I've now thoroughly researched my position and my initial thought that I was right. Here's all of the evidence to back it up. Everyone loves the lawyer then. You know, you know who else does that? Army strategists. <laughs> uh, my buddy Clayton Berkeley, who actually went to uh, Bliss. 
uh, about two years ago, we still have some ongoing email dialogue about things we talked about when we were in the G5 and Fourth ID together, and it's all <laughs> strategic, operationally focused. She, she was a UVA fan, um, die hard. Uh, her daughter went there. So I was like, what's the opposite of that? Virginia Tech. <laughs> so that's, that's how I started rooting for the Hokies. I had a few other friends that rooted for the Hokies, like got me, got me trained up in it. Because I had moved in here in third grade the year before, so I wasn't as familiar with the colleges in the area. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's what set me on a path to be a Virginia Tech fan and uh, um, led, led me to apply in here. That's cool. My when, when I was a kid in Texas, my older brother was a Cowboys fan, so therefore I could not be a Cowboys fan, and I became a Texas Oilers fan, Houston Oilers. <laughs> uh, and then they moved to Tennessee and became Titans, and then I stopped caring. My dad is an Aggie, and so as a child, I got dragged to a Aggie muster, and in a similar vein, when they went around and said, oh, where are you going to go to school? And people said, oh, I'm going to go to Texas A&M. I wanted to be a contrarian, and I stood up and I said, hook them horns, I'm going to UT. And that was the last Aggie muster I ever went to. <laughs> <laughs> you just like to make it out of there alive. I got some definite stares. Yes, How old were you? Oh, old enough to know better, young enough that nobody could yell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds like my daughter. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything you guys want to talk about before we move on? This is where it's going to get real. So I hear that you just accepted a law school. Yes. So congratulations. So um, I was working on scholarship stuff with them, but I got it got it today to where I can go to Regent University next year. You found out today? Well, no, I didn't find out today, but I uh, I accepted it today. So spent spent a little bit of money on the security deposits. So. Congratulations, congratulations, man! Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Fantastic. Excited about it. So that means you're gonna do ed delay. Yes, sir. Okay, can you explain the process that you've gone through and what remains for people who are interested in doing ed delay? Absolutely, so uh, for ed delay, I expressed interest in it, um, like sophomore, junior year, and um, got with Mr. Douglas and he, uh, he, he organized a lot of stuff for me, uh, made sure I was on the right track. There's an application process, make sure you got like the, the right grades for it. Um, yeah, you, you write up, uh, I think it was uh, why I want to be a JAG officer, um, like a one page thing for that. And uh, then, you, then, then you send up that along with quite a few other things in a packet and uh, it gets reviewed by the brigade and uh, wait to hear back on your acceptance and I get accepted. So pretty That's excited. pretty cool. Hey, Paige, can you explain the other way that you can become a JAG, the FLEP program? I can. So if we are maybe not as set on being a lawyer or want some different experience, there's something called the Funded Legal Education Program. So you're eligible two to five years in. And similar process actually to the Ed Delay where it's the application of why I want to be a lawyer, LSAT, GPA, but you need your chain of command support as well as all of your OERs from being your junior officer time. And then it goes to one woman who's been sitting at the Pentagon managing all of these things for probably about 20 years. And then you don't hear anything until December time frame. And then you get a short little email whether you've been selected. And hopefully you've also been applying to law schools during that process because you've got about two months to commit to where you're going to go. But different process. Um, Fantastic either way, super excited for you. I still remember how I felt the day I accepted for going to law school and it's just this incredibly impactful moment where you're gonna, the three years are gonna fly by and you're just always gonna remember that moment. It's awesome. Gonna you're totally it. gonna do it. <laughs> no concerns. All right, it is time to take. So are we going up the exponential curve at this point, sir? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is the smelling one, so like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to smell it after this, because like, it's the one that's sitting on, that has the most smell. So. I'm ready, you you ready for it? This is the, uh, the watermelon flavored one. Oh. So that's the sweet. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yup. Yeah, I'm right there with you, I just, uh, Oh my god. I don't know, something wrong with me. Mason, you gotta tell me how one earns the distinction of holding a Denny's pancake eating <laughs> recipe for the record. That is 17 pancakes. Yep, so oh I had the record at the local Denny's. Um, so they, they, it was my idea to like have a competition. Uh, so like I was in, I was in 
sixth grade at the time, so. So I was a lot smaller, but I, I guess I could pound pancakes even even better than I can now. But I would, <laughs> did, Denny's no longer has this, but they had they had they had an all you can eat pancake special for four dollars. You probably broke the system. <laughs> yeah, I'm like that's better than the like five dollar little Caesars. Like I just get all you can eat pancakes for four dollars. <laughs> so I would have my parents take me there all the time. And um, one day I got up to thirteen, and the uh, my waitress, who, who we knew well, and it was right down the street. Um, she, she's like, that's the most I've ever seen anybody eat. So I'm like, hmm, that sounds like I should like have, like have a an challenge. award for that. So, uh, so she said, all right, we'll, we'll start keeping tally, but you got to bring in some competition. So uh, I, I brought in some like. How friends. does it get worse? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm not laughing at you, but. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I brought, I brought in some friends for some competition, a lot of them double my age, and I, I got 17. Uh, and they were about this big, so like, like that, big of, that, that big of a pancake. Yeah, so, like, and they were like, they were thick, like buttermilk. So, I guess I, you just gotta eat quick. Um, That's insane. If you get Station of Four Drive, there was, and I'm pretty sure still is a restaurant there that serves pancakes that are literally the size of a dinner plate, and about like that thick. My, my, that was my brother's first duty station I went to visit him. So in between snowstorms and Chuck Norris movies on DVD, uh, we went to this restaurant and I couldn't finish one. Not even. It sounds like you could put him out of business. <laughs> Paige, how <laughs> did you end up becoming a coxswain? Is that how yes, you sir. pronounce it? In crew, the sport. Yes. So in high school, Turns out I talk a lot, and I met someone that said, you know, there's a sport for that. Um, you can wear a microphone, and you can force people onto the water with no way of escaping, and it will actually, you can just turn up the volume, and they're trapped for hours on end. And I thought, wow, that's the sport for me. No coordination required. Get to be in control, and get to yell at people. The there's nothing better. The ultimate captive audience. Yes, I have certainly had rowers, so in a shell, you're, I have like eight people, and sometimes they get a little upset with uh, the decisions that you are making, but because it's a captive audience, all they can really do is unscrew their oar lock and pull the oar out and say, I'm not going any further, and then it's the classic, I can wait here all day. Just sit here, and then eventually <laughs> they put the oar back in, and we, we keep going, but did that through college as well, and uh, it's a great time. Loved it. Men's team, they like, Fantastic, always surrounded by really tall humans who could reach things on shelves for me. Helpful. Very helpful. That's awesome. What's the coolest part of your job? I think the travel is actually one of the best parts. One of my um, bosses on the job side of the house this past week said, you, clearly we know what you like. You like to travel. And I said, oh, I don't know about that. So I said, really, how many trips do you have planned coming up? A lot. <laughs> so I love the, the interaction with teams, the programs, I think there's lots of different, as you'll discover, there's lots of different ways to be an attorney and some of it is being in the courtroom, some of it is being an advisor, someone is, you know, sometimes just behind the desk, nagging away on whatever it is and I really get a lot of gratification being face-to-face -to -face with people and provide advice, so I think that's the best part. Remind me, there's, like in a division... Breathing hurts. <laughs> <laughs> In the division legal cell, there's the national security law team. Yes, sir. And then what's the other team called? That other field of practice? Like contracts and fiscal? I or guess. Or the support to soldiers and Oh, families. legal assistance? Legal assistance. Yes, sir. I, I worked a lot with the national security law folks when I was a G5 maneuver planner, but then when I was a battalion XO or company commander, it was always the latter team. So keeping the paralegals and the lawyers um, in, in cahoots with the leadership is really important for Army officers. They're going to help advise you on decisions you make, but also help you solve problems for your soldiers and help them uh, go through some crazy stuff in life. Mm -hmm. How are they? So when you, like, breathe, it makes it worse. Yeah. <laughs> you just, it's, it's like the plank. You just got to exist. I'm, we're existing. <laughs> we're waiting for your body to metabolize that, that neurotoxin. Is this better or worse than the 17 pancakes that you had? Uh, I'll say the 17 pancakes was harder because like, I had a pound. Like, <laughs> I'm not, I hate to brag, but I'm not feeling it right now. 
I, I hate to brag, but I'm not feeling it right now. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> with that being said, uh, what our experience will be with the last dab experience. However, it is yeah. customary around here to put a little something extra on it. It is the last dab, after all. You don't have to. The size of it is up to you, and I won't judge you if you don't want it anymore. I think it's only fair to let the future lawyer torture the ah. current lawyer. You want, me, you want me to do a video? Do it. Okay. Dumb, dumb, I'll, dumb. I'll practice on mine. I'll practice on mine for so, so just, I don't pour. Just do it. You're good. I trust you. Okay. Well, I miss. Yep. That's why I did mine first. Yeah. That is a very <laughs> bold dab. And then. No, I think you have to match it because of what you did. That's yours. I know because okay. of what you did. You want that much? Yes. <laughs> okay, I think that's more. <laughs> Let's save it. I'm excited. I'm excited. You're okay. You're okay. I'm excited. No, I'll take mine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> congratulations, guys. You're about to take the final step. Cheers. Oh, wait. Good luck. Godspeed. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I think Carrie, you're helping me. Oh, God. Mm. Right, Paige. Yeah, it's the know. last dab. <laughs> Stampedes through our mouths. Mm. Stampeding. Did you watch the Dolly Parton halftime show at the Cowboys Commanders game last Thanksgiving? What did you think of it so? And why do you name everything Jolene? So I saw clips of it after the fact. But Dolly Parton is the queen and I love them. Okay, so I love Jolene, like unreasonably love the song Jolene. Jolene, 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 Jolene. It started at a bowling where you get to name. Oh my god, source. <laughs> you get to name your takes, and I named mine Jolene. <laughs> so good. Okay. So went through lots of Jolene's. My internet's named Jolene. Car is named Jolene, internet, you name it, I'm trying to name it Jolene. It's actually banned amongst my friend group when they ask me. It's <laughs> a great song. It's a bad term. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. <laughs> one of the housekeeping staff on our floor, one's named Charlene, and one name, one's named Arlene. <laughs> so much worse. I will sing their names to them to the tune of Jolene. Jolene. Now in Hawaii, or not Hawaii, um, in Australia a couple years ago, I was out in the middle of nowhere, sitting out, getting lobster rolls, delicious, but the shack, there's a band, they sit down, like, okay, what's gonna happen? Like, what's the set? It starts with Jolene, similar to the tears I currently have in my eyes, but for <laughs> less painful reasons, I was very excited about hearing that song. Outstanding. Okay, Mason, any other questions um, for Kevin Wayhoff before I ask you one? Um, what's the case that you'll never forget? Uh, probably how I die after eating all of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Actually, I do know. It's a fictional case because in OBC, so once you become a JAG officer, you'll go to Charlottesville, you'll do a fake trial. It's called the Archer Trial. And I practice for this. This was my like a few good men moment where I had to like shout and win and like convince the judge that I am right. I spent evenings practicing for it. I was working the room. I was like, okay, like this is how I'm using the space. Turns out when I actually got up to give my presentation, I just stood back and forth and I moved from the left side of the podium to the right side of the podium. And at one point the judge stopped me and said, Huh? You're making me motion sick. <laughs> Please stop. I will never forget that. Outstanding. Oh, but I am dying. <laughs> You're doing great. Hey, Mason, yeah. carry us across the finish line here. You are a member of the Esprit team, are you not? Yes, sir. What are your favorite memories of getting the core and the student, the cadet section all riled up and your interaction with the football players from your time on the Esprit team? I have a few. Um, number one, 
It'll always be number <laughs> one. UNC, sophomore year, Virginia Tech. That, that was the day that ended COVID ever. <laughs> Sorry, <Virginia> Tech. <laughs> I was like, I'm actually feeling this one. We'll say. I, I hate to cry, but I'm not feeling it right now. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> this is everything I've ever wanted in a job. This is the moment I'll never forget. I'm so happy. Glad I could provide you something. Thank you, sir. But being on the field, jumping around at Inner Sandman, and like after having worn my mask to the game, wearing my mask around the game, and like, okay, we're at the game, you can take your mask off. And then I'm, I'm looking around, I'm like, all these, sta this, all these stands are packed. I had never been to a college football game because COVID canceled all of my freshman year. And uh, like, we're just jumping around on the field, and it was surreal, surreal. And in a moment I'll never forget. Um, one, one of my favorite, like, Quick memories is when you were doing the push-up board, huh? and uh, it was for a safety, right? So you do it for every point that you score. Yeah. And he was the first on the list, and he got to do a safety. So he did a clap push-up and like almost broke like our collarbones. <laughs> uh, we were not expecting it, but then sorry, he, but, sorry, Serena, no yeah. part of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, you hopped off the board, and then you, you dabbed me up and uh, walked away, and then someone was like, "Dude, you just tapped him." Lieutenant Colonel Harris. I'm like. Yeah, I guess I did. I guess I did. So that was that was a quick experience. I don't understand. Tap out what? Tap out. So like. Oh. Like you tap out. <laughs> Sorry. So like, yeah, like that. Yeah. No, I like, what did I tap out? Oh. I didn't tap nothing. I'm trying so hard not to tap out right now. <laughs> yeah. So so like I was like, eh? I I I get it. I did. That was pretty cool. And then uh, then also we do interviews and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I guess this will be out after all the interviews. But uh, I make I make uh, the tapis, which is uh, tapping here is like trying out, and the tapis are like the tryouts. I make them like FaceTime like one of their parents and sing them a, their favorite song. Aww. And uh, it's like Sweet. super funny, and that's like a very enjoyable part of it as well. That's an interesting tradition. I like that. Okay, well guess what? You guys did I survived. it. You <laughs> conquered uh, five wings of death. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> this camera, this camera, this camera. Tell the people what you got going on in your life. Oh gosh. Try not to die. Um, <laughs> looking forward to continuing to be an attorney and hopefully come back and do more wings tasting. This has opened my eyes to grace. <laughs> and helping you get through law school. I'm very excited about seeing where you go in the next couple of years. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, so I got law school. I'm committed uh, today, I guess. So committed to it, and um, looking forward to where that leads. And, uh, yeah. and finish out the school year here successfully. Get that done. My head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey guys, thanks for coming. Hope you guys enjoy as much as we did. River Forge. Gotta go, Hotter.